Good morning. This is Dylan Jovenet with Behind the Markets. And we've been talking about the move, the EI era, replacing the AI with the EI era, really trying to give you an idea of how radical this shift is. And I wanted to explain to you how this is happening. I want to take a little and give you kind of a, you know, like David Letterman used to do a top 10 list. Here's a top seven list of how robots are going to change our lives, the EI era. Remember, AI is moving from the computer. It's jumping off the screen, like a little graphic in a Steven Spielberg movie, like Jurassic Park. It's jumping off the screen and it's going into physical bodies. That's where they're calling it the EI era, the embodied intelligence era. And here are the top seven ways that AI is moving into physical forms like robots or smart devices that connect to the internet and interact with the physical world. Here, home assistants, smart robots will go beyond Roombas and start handling tasks like laundry folding, dishwashing, or even basic cooking. Okay. Think of a home assistant that doesn't just respond to voice commands, but physically helps around the house. Okay. I'll never have one of those in my house because I've seen too many Terminator movies. Number two, elder care and health monitoring. Robots with embodied intelligence will help our elderly or disabled individuals with mobility, medication reminders, and fall detection. These systems can track vitals in real time and alert caregivers or emergency services. That's going to be a big deal. Personal companionship. Come on. This is number three, personal companionship. Social robots will offer companionship, conversation, and emotional interaction useful for mental health and combating loneliness. Now, I might have examples, robotic pets or humanoid companions with personality like AI. I've seen too many Terminator movies to ever get one of those. But I understand loneliness is a killer. Man, oh man, it's a killer, especially for the elderly. So I could see that becoming a big thing. It's a killer. I've seen loneliness actually kill people. Number four, top ways this is gonna be, this is a real good one, education and tutoring. Embodied tutors can physically interact with children, helping them to learn to write, build things, or explore STEM subjects in hands-on way. So it's great for early learning or special education. Can you imagine that? Wow, amazing. Number five, shopping and retail. In-store robots will guide customers, provide personalized recommendations, or help carry heavy items. Immediately, what happens to the retail industry is gonna be mind-boggling, really. But uh, really, at home, embodied AI could serve as a fashion assistant, showing you outfits or scanning your wardrobe. Now again, it doesn't need to be a robot. It could just be like a mirror that is interacting with you. Oh, come on, that would be the biggest product ever for women. My goodness, my daughter asked me, my God, yesterday she was asking me for 20 minutes if this outfit works better with these shoes and all this other stuff. And I, my eyes glaze over, I don't even know what's going on here. But if she had a mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all, if she could actually talk and a mirror would actually show her the best ways to match and what stores to get them at and all this other stuff. Oh my goodness. Or she could take all her clothes and upload it into the mirror, mirror, and the mirror says you should match these. Oh my God, <laughs> that'll be freaking huge. And in-store robots will guide customers, provide personalized recommendations or help carry heavy items. Yeah, carry heavy items. Who doesn't need help carrying things to the car? That will be the first way those are used. Number six, fitness and physical training. Intelligent fitness bots can demonstrate exercises, correct your form, and adjust routines in real time. Virtual trainers can be embodied in AR glasses. Yeah, I don't really focus too much on that one, unfortunately. My fitness routine is just walking to the office some days. I play basketball with my son a lot. I do a lot of those things. I ride bikes with my kids, but I'm a physical trainer. <laughs> anyway, I'm that guy. Transportation and delivery. This is already happening. You can see this happening. Personal delivery bots may fetch groceries or takeout and bring them right to your door. Wow, personal delivery bot. Mind-boggling, mind-boggling. That's delivery. You could also see a world where Amazon or UPS or all these delivery services just has an automated self-driving car. Why wouldn't you do that? You take all the boxes you have to deliver that day, you put them on shelves, a robot says, oh, okay, this address, you take it down and it just wheels it to your house and then goes back in the box. Then the car drives down to the next house and it pulls down the box, the little robot inside pulls down the box and then takes it out and goes eh, down and it just brings it to your house and it goes back in eh, to the van and just drives. Of course that's gonna happen. My goodness, that's gonna happen. Wow, that is a big deal. 
Yeah, that's going to happen. Wow. And autonomous vehicles, we talked about Tesla, use embodied intelligence to sense, decide, and navigate roads with physical world feedback. Remember something, all of these things I'm talking about, all these things, they sound crazy. Some of them sound crazy to me, really. It's really mind boggling. But all of these things, they are coming. They're all coming. And the ones that'll come first will be the ones that are most profitable, the ones that save businesses the most money. Those will have the highest return on investment. They'll come first, no doubt about it. And no robot that folds laundry is coming first, okay? That's not happening. The robot that helps guard warehouses or eliminates the need for lifting at warehouses or could move assembly lines better than just an automated arm, those are the ones that are gonna come first because it'll save companies money. It'll increase the return on investment. Those are gonna be the first wave, I am telling you, and all of them have to pull on data. They're all connected to the internet. They're all connected to limitless data to provide patterns and recognition. Tesla's robo-taxi, it's all connected to the internet, which means it's all connected to data centers, which means it's all connected to power stations. And they have to be, since they're interacting with people, since they have their lives in human hands, having a data center with enough compute connected, plugged in to a nuclear power source that never goes down is essential. It's essential. And we talk about all this in our brand new report on EI. I hope you read it. I hope you check it out. We put a whole new video together for you. Anyway, that's all I have today. Have a wonderful day.